Yashar, Jasher, 27. And Esau, at that time, after the death of Avraham, frequently went in the field to hunt. And Nimrod, king of Babel, the same was Amraphel, also frequently went with his mighty men to hunt in the field and to walk about with his men in the cool of the day. And Nimrod was observing Esau all the days, for a jealousy was formed in the heart of Nimrod against Esau all the days. And on a certain day, Esau went in the field to hunt, and he found Nimrod walking in the wilderness with his two men. And all his mighty men and his people were with him in the wilderness, but they removed at a distance from him, and they went from him in different directions to hunt. And Esau concealed himself for Nimrod, and he lurked for him in the wilderness. And Nimrod and his men that were with him did not know him, and Nimrod and his men frequently walked about in the field at the cool of the day, and to know where his men were hunting in the field. And Nimrod and two of his men that were with him came to the place where they were, when Esau started suddenly from his lurking place, and drew his sword, and hastened, and ran to Nimrod, and cut off his head. And Esau fought a desperate fight with the two men that were with Nimrod. And when they called out to him, Esau turned to them, and smote them to death with his sword. And all the mighty men of Nimrod, who had left him to go to the wilderness, heard the cry at a distance, and they knew the voices of those two men, and they ran to know the cause of it, when they found their king, and the two men that were with him lying dead in the wilderness. And when Esau saw the mighty men of Nimrod coming at a distance, he fled, and thereby escaped. And Esau took the valuable garments of Nimrod, which Nimrod's father had bequeathed to Nimrod, and with which Nimrod prevailed over the whole land. And he ran and concealed them in his house. And Esau took those garments and ran into the city, on account of Nimrod's men. And he came unto his father's house, wearied and exhausted from fight. And he was ready to die through grief when he approached his brother Yaakov and sat before him. And he said unto his brother Yaakov, Behold, I shall die this day, and wherefore then do I want the birthright? And Yaakov acted wisely with Esau in this matter. And Esau sold his birthright to Yaakov, for it was so brought about by Yahuwah. And Esau's portion in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Avraham had bought from the children of Chet for the possession of a burial ground, Esau also sold to Yaakov, and Yaakov bought all this from his brother Esau for value given. And Yaakov wrote the whole of this in a sefer, and he testified the same with witnesses, and he sealed it, and the sefer remained in the hands of Yaakov. And when Nimrod, the son of Cush, died, his men lifted him up and brought him in consternation and buried him in, the, in his city. 
And all the days that Nimrod lived were two hundred and fifteen years, and he died. And the day, the days that Nimrod reigned upon the people of the land were one hundred and eighty-five years. And Nimrod died by the sword of Esau, in shame and contempt. And the seed of Avraham caused his death, as he had seen in his dream. And at the death of Nimrod, his kingdom became divided into many divisions. And all those parts that Nimrod reigned over were restored to the respective kings of the land, who recovered them after the death of Nimrod. And all the people of the house of Nimrod were for a long time enslaved to all the other kings of the land.